Ah, oh. we did it. We're still here. Happy 2024. Happy New Year, wherever you are in the world. Uh, yeah, very fortunate to be alive. And I'll do a little recap of last year, 2023. Uh, and these things, you know, I'm not going to have this rah, rah, rah speech, New Year's resolutions. I think it's great to start uh, new goals, with, you know, the fresh calendar. Uh, you know, it's, it's easy to start on day one, January 1st, with any habit. But y you could start any given day of the year. Uh, starting a new training plan for a new race. Maybe that determines on, you know, how long you have before your next race and events. But I do also learn from the mistakes that I made or the experiences I guess I had, good and bad, in uh, the past, in 2023 now. So quick recap of this year. Let's break it down. Hope you're doing well. And thanks for following along. All right, so 2023, you know, I posted on social media, uh, a long caption basically on all platforms, but you know, I had a kind of a before after shot. Early 2023 of me in the hospital bed, getting some invasive procedures done, uh, catheter insertions. I had a right uh, heart catheter uh, pressure measurement and then a, a pulmonary angiogram. Uh, and it was, you know, they were looking for chronic clots. They were looking for bigger health issues that worried me a bit because it could affect my life expectancy. And in the short term, uh, for me at least, it was very scary. Uh, these were very fairly uh, expensive procedures, probably the most invasive procedures I've had. And, you know, Sandy and I were at a hospital all day. It took months and months to schedule these things. It cost, uh, well, out of pocket totally, it would have been tens and tens and thousands of dollars. Uh, but, you know, it was something that the doctors and I had decided to do because uh, my breathing had still felt very limited. I still have uh, had a lot of chest pain when I was exercising especially. And uh, yeah, my VO2 max had, max had dropped to uh, 44, 46. That was lab measured a couple times earlier, uh, over a year ago now, um, I guess, well, one was at the end maybe of 2022, but going into 2023, stationary bike tests, treadmill tests, breathing tests, uh, but then also these heart pressure tests, a lot of, you know, radioactive dye, IV injection, uh, you know, CT scans, ultrasounds of the heart, uh, the echocardiogram, stuff like that. Um, it was it was a lot. And that was mainly concentrated earlier in the year. And, you know, I was still running. I was still trying to do races. But if you saw earlier in the year, I did struggle a bit. I did struggle. And it's been a struggle ever since 2021. Uh, with a lot, well, a lot of things. You could check out the film Starting Over by my friend Stephen Ganoza. Uh, it's on our Mutt Running channel. It kind of documents uh, what some of the things Sandy and I have gone through in the last couple of years. But yeah, the pulmonary embolism, the scar tissue in the lungs, the breathing issues, the chest pain, yada, yada, yada. Um, the, you know, I passed the test pretty well, and they didn't find chronic clots, and they didn't find tremes tremendous pressure in my pulmonary artery, which was the biggest uh, concern. So they gave me the green light to exercise more and I ramped up my training and was able to do some races. Quick recap, uh, you know, seventh place at the Sky Running Race, Sky Running Series up in Canada, Minotaur Sky Race, probably one of the most technical races I've done overall, running on scree fields, stuff like that, really fun. Uh, and then I tried to recover real quick for Val Duran, which ended up uh, being a little bit of a meltdown for me because of, of reoccurring chest pain still and it seemed to manifest itself after you know about five six hours into the race I don't know if it was inflammation but it, that same debilitating chest pain struggling to breathe ended up dropping out of Val Duran they ended up actually canceling the race anyway I don't know if I would have been able to finish because of the weather but uh, for at least after the top uh, runners had already finished, but I was moving slow in that. And that kind of made me a little worried going into TDS because here you have what ended up being a 96 mile race. TDS was extra long this past summer and it was also uh, quite snowy even in Chamonix or it was raining in Chamonix a lot the day before TDS. But during the race, we were actually going through uh, freezing temperatures and, and inches and inches of snow and mud on the passes. So you have a race that's already a lot more technical than something like UTMB that's basically almost just as long with just as much climbing that starts at midnight in Cormier and it's in cold weather. I was wearing my rain jacket the whole time. I was worried about hypothermia because I've not fared well in cold weather, but I was worried about the chest pain and the breathing and you know, you got all your gear, the trekking poles. Uh, but that actually, I held it together pretty well, and I didn't get 
that severe lung pain. I wouldn't say my breathing's been normal, but it, it felt definitely, there was a turning point maybe uh, at TDS, and this was the end of August. Um, and then being able to not fall apart in a 100 mile ultra marathon race in the mountains in adverse weather conditions. 12th place at TDS, a little over 22 hours. Pretty solid uh, for me, given my track record at the UTMB uh, style races, and especially mountain 100 miles. Like I've been honored to experience any service, any distance, and that kind of really was a, a big uh, turning point for me. And then finally, more recently, doing the Honolulu Road Marathon. Uh, 231, slowest marathon of my life, but getting seventh place and also hot and humid conditions, you know, close to 90% humidity for the whole race and temperatures in the 70s. Uh, so, you know, factor that in and my limited training, road flat road training after TDS. Uh, it was a good comeback. It was a good comeback. I was really happy with how things turned out in Honolulu and thanks for following along on the, the road adventures. But we'll get back to Trail Ultras 2024. We got Tarawera Ultra Marathon in New Zealand. I'm honored to be able to return there. Uh, maybe do some ski mo racing, ski mountaineering, uphill, uphill only mainly, but then the Grand Traverse here in Colorado, which is an ultra marathon length ski distance race uh, at the end of March. And that's Crested Butte to Aspen, backcountry skiing with teammates. Uh, also starts at midnight. But uh, that's, you know, a little worried about that one. That'll be a big adventure. More on that to come. But getting back into running, uh, you know, first day of the year here, January 1st, 2024. Already doubling. Ran uh, eight miles earlier today and then did a over five miles in the afternoon here, evening group run. Having a lot of fun with that. Starting to run on the trails again, stacking vert. And big goals, big goals for 2024. Um We'll see, I, I've only committed so far to Tarawera and the Grand Traverse uh, for races, but in some local schemo uphill races maybe. But uh, after that, definitely do want to get back. Uh, would like to do some big ultras and you know me, any service, any distance. And you know, reflecting on that with my health, uh, feeling a little bit better about how my lungs are doing and, and especially after Honolulu and the intensity and trying to just stay consistent, stay fit, stay healthy. Uh, you know, it's about doing all the little things and maybe you could see this in your own routine, you know, going to get in some more strength mobility types of training, uh, going to try to get in consistent mileage, consistent workout plans and share that with you, hopefully consistent YouTube, social media uploads, training talks on here and being able to do this. I'm really thankful and grateful uh, for all of this to still be here in 2024 on, uh, you know, having a life threatening illness, hospitalization, the fire. Uh, really puts things in perspective and what I prioritize in life. And a lot of that comes back to, uh, you know, spending time with loved ones, especially over the holidays, but then just having fun, uh, having fun, interacting, having new experiences, meeting a bunch of great people and feeding off of that positive energy and those, those vibes. And, you know, it's, it's, I've been lucky. I've been able to experience a lot of any service, any distance races over the years and travel a ton, uh, especially international, uh, because a lot of these events are very different, right? Doing a technical 100 mile mountain race is very different from doing a flat road marathon on a universe uh, uniform surface or, you know, doing some of these sky running races, Golden Trail series races in the past, going against guys like Killian Jornet, uh, always finishing behind him, I will say, sometimes second to him a couple times. But, you know, doing that's a lot different than, you know, uh, Lake Sonoma 50 mile or uh, Transvolcania or, you know, all these different races, Chuckanut 50k. Uh, what races have I repeated a lot? Speedgoat 50k. Uh, but anyway, I digress there. Really happy to share this with you guys. Uh, really, goals for the YouTube channel would love to get up to 200. 50,000 subscribers, quarter million. Why not go for half a million? I'm not sure. Uh, my plaque for getting 100,000 burned up in the fire. I did lose that. Uh, really near and dear to my heart. But this YouTube community, been doing YouTube videos for over 15 years on here now and really thankful for your continued viewership and support, the Patreon supporters that really keep this channel alive. But I wanna hear your goals. I wanna hear what you'd like to see on YouTube, especially uh, comment below with uh, anything you've got planned for 2024. Let me know how you're doing. Let me know what kind of content you'd like to see on here. Uh, training talk topics, search my library, search the playlist though for old stuff. Cause again, 
15 years of videos here on the YouTube. I've, I've covered uh, a lot of different training talks for any service, any distance over those years. Uh, so check that out. But yeah, great. I'd uh, love to hear from you and, and hear about your goals and how you're doing. So thank you from the bottom of my heart. Thanks to title sponsor Hoka. Still with them. Uh, keeping the dream alive. Um, proud to announce that. I'll still be representing Hoka. So, uh, you know, Camelback, Koros, uh, their spring energy. Um, I'll stop there. Uh, compressed board. These are sponsors that are continuing on with me, so really thankful for their support also. But yeah, the Patreon support uh, really keeps this YouTube channel alive as well as your subscriptions, likes, and views. So share this on social media. You could find me all across social media. I'm usually at, under my real name, at Sage Canada. That's Instagram, TikTok, X, uh, Facebook, you name it. So Strava. So thank you so much again. Again, hope you're doing well. Wishing you the best in this new year, 2024. Let's go. Oh, is this thing still on? Oh yeah, also check out our training plans at higherrunning.com. Give us a follow on higherrunning.trainingplans for any surface, any distance. Thanks again.